Hi, I'm Tom Cherry Holmes, and I'm just a hacker having fun. In this video, we expand upon the concepts that we showed in the previous video to take our fourth words that we've built here and do something useful to them. We also show some uh, basic editing commands to take and get rid of some things. Now, what we have here, as shown on screen here, are two fourth words that we've made for ourselves. And as they are right now, eh, they're, they do things, but they could be a lot more useful. What if we wanted to display other backgrounds other than red? What if we wanted to display backgrounds of specific things depending on program status? That sort of thing. Well, as it turns out, we can do that just fine. We just need to modify our little command here, our little word here, to be a bit more useful. Now, for this, I'm actually going to use an editor command called E for erase. And again, this editor command is described in the editor documentation right here. Erase line in with blanks. And as you can see, it takes one parameter, which line you want to erase. So knowing that, we go ahead and I'm going to just erase that line and write a new one, making sure we're in the editor. And it lets us know that everything's okay. And if we do a list again, we'll see that that line is gone. I'll actually take and write a new one here. And I'll make one just called background color. And it simply is just going to take one parameter the color that we want to set the background to. For that, all we need to do is write out our new one. Now you'll notice this is one fewer parameter than last time. That's because we're going to specify that second parameter on the stack before we type our word. This is how it'll work. And actually we're going to take and list our new line here. Make one more little change. And we're going to take and make one other little change here. Actually, I'll go ahead and change this, and we'll add one little thing here. We want one number, and we don't return anything. This is what is known as fourth notation. The first piece here is what's expected on the stack. It gets passed through our word, and the second part is what gets returned. We don't return anything, we just consume something so there's nothing on the right hand side. But we use this to, uh, as a sort of reference to let us know that we do need to take and uh, specify a number. And actually, now that I think about it, it actually needs to be a uh, byte, a single 8 bit byte. <laughs> so, there we go. Now, say we weren't exactly sure that this was going to work. Well, we could test it out. And we could actually start testing it out now that we've defined the word. Another color, or a black. or the standard Atari Blue. Etc. Now, 
this is basically what's happened here is it's replay uh, on the compiler word here it's as if we had typed out 148.710 C exclamation point. Now because this is possible because we know that C exclamation point takes two values the value to put into the memory register and the memory register that we want to change. So there we go. Our first new command to uh, actually that actually does something useful. Well, let's expand on that a little bit. In addition to that, we also have a concept of uh, constants, for example. You can define a constant for red, and it's also done in uh, reverse Polish notation, so we use a, a word called constant. Or let's say we want to create a color for green. Well, no problem. For that, I'll take and use the uh, uh, Atari color palette here. I'll do CG. Do we actually have it here? Eh, whoops. I'll just say blue. What the hell? No problem. So now we have two constants and we can refer to them in the same way. So there you go. As you can start to see, we start building bits and pieces of useful words to take and make code already more readable here. And look at where look at where we are now from where we started. We're already making things that are considerably more readable than they are when we started. So now that we know that those pieces are there, we could take and edit them in if we wanted to. But let's think about this another way. What if we wanted to, for example, create some constants? Sure we're in the editor and since we use the Atari full screen editor here I actually can do this and it works just fine let's say I want to define uh, error as and success color as no problem. So at this point so at this point now we look at what we have and we have enough here so that we can load this all in. Now it is worth noting that yes you can redefine a word at any given time but what if I want to go ahead and make sure that I have a clean slate so that I know that this loads correctly. I can use the word cold to restart the fourth interpreter and to push back to a known starting point. Now the debugger and the editor uh, have special words at the end of their definitions which will prevent them from being written over when you do a cold star. Very useful when you're editing code. So knowing that <laughs> wait a 
for a moment. We list. We see our final code. And let's load it in. We know it's loaded in. And now I can use And you can see how these different pieces can build on top of each other to do very useful things. In the next one, I'm actually going to delve into some of my code, and we're going to see how I use these bits and pieces to build primitives that will take and modify and manipulate the display list. Look at it, mo modify, manipulate, etc. Until next time, good night.